Um, on 5th Avenue, between 116th and 117th Streets. The New York Fire Department operates a station affectionately known as the Fire Factory. This is the home of Engine 58 and Ladder 26, and these companies have been protecting this area of the city for nearly a century. Since these companies first came into service, they have consistently been among the busiest companies in New York City. Last year, Engine 58 responded to 4,366 calls, while Ladder 26 made 4,822 runs. As you might expect, with this kind of activity, the members are a very close-knit group. When you're in a company that's busy like this, uh, you always find that the morale is high. So once the morale is high, you get along fine with everybody, you know? So it's a pleasure to work in places like that. This, is a, this happens to be a house with a great deal of pride and tradition. Um, which affects all of us who are proud to be here. We've all tried very hard, as a matter of fact, to get into this house. Um, that, that really, uh, it shows me things that different people do, especially the more experienced members. Um, this is their house. This is their second home. Some single guys, maybe it's their first home. What I like the most about it is just the way all the, all the guys get, get along good together. There's no problems here. Any problems are very small. Everybody works together good. Uh, they help each other. It's just a, a nice atmosphere. Most people think of meals as quality family time. And that's exactly what it is at the fire factory. Everyone comes together to help slice and dice, share jokes and stories, and sometimes heated debate. But while thoughts of a barbecue might make you think of the beach or park, barbecuing for these fellows is done within the confines of a rear yard enclosed with razor wire. The neighborhood isn't always friendly, but the neighbors have a common respect for the firefighters because they know when the box is pulled, these companies will respond. We're open 24 hours a day, uh, seven days a week, 365 days a year. Uh, the people know that uh, when they push the button on the alarm box or when they pick up the phone and they call the fire department or they need help, they know that they're going to get a fireman there right away. So instead of calling the cops or calling EMS or calling housing maintenance for a water leak or uh, whatever, they call the fire department because we're there in uh, three minutes. Unlike the Bronx, Harlem doesn't have an abundance of vacant buildings. Chances are when these companies are called to go to work, it will be in occupied structures and they'll need to be in top shape to handle the extreme physical demands that firefighters go through on a daily basis. Well, as far as the fire duty, you can't beat it. You know, it's, it's kind of a, a good feeling rushing in while everybody's rushing out. If you drive around here, you see a lot of projects. You don't have many vacant buildings. Like people think, uh, you know, they, like they had them in the Bronx, the South Bronx. Basically, everything is here is occupied. There's still a lot of tenements. They have a lot of H-type. A lot of fireproof. You have a little bit of everything here. Traditionally, Harlem used to be basically black people, but I think Harlem has been uh, separated. You have Spanish Harlem now, and really even that's mixed. Um, there's just so many different people moving into uh, New York City that they're running out of space and they have to live somewhere. So this is one of the areas that there's uh, a low-income housing available. In this particular neighborhood, you have uh, projects in the immediate vicinity of the firehouse. You know, fireproof, uh, some 22 stories, some 17, some smaller ones. Then you have uh, a mix, as you go a little further west, of tenements. Uh, new law tenements, pretty big tenements. Old law tenements, smaller. We have some uh, brownstones. You have a lot of stores on the main avenues here. Uh, it, once in a while, you can see intermix a small, real old frame, real old, old, old frame, wooden building uh, stuck in between, maybe 120 years old. So it's a mix, a good mix of all different buildings here. For most of the last decade, Engine 58 was part of an experimental program to test the visibility of apparatus. And this engine was painted lime green. While the color scheme was not widely accepted, the men became attached to their green machine. Green truck uh, does seem a little awkward when I first got here, but it uh, kind of grows on you. You know, it, it does. The thing about the green truck is it stands out. And uh, I guess like 58, you know, they, they stand out. And 
I guess it goes along. It goes along with them, with their uh, with their mode. It's it's right in, it's right in step with 58 because they stand out of the uh, of the crowd. We tell most people we're from Jersey, in case they ask, and uh, that usually says, "Oh yeah, I heard about that. You guys from Jersey." So, but uh, it was in the beginning. We uh, it took a little while to get used to. But then after a while, you become proud, and it's like anything else. You know, you, you, only a few companies have the green rigs, and uh, you, just, you, you develop a certain pride about it, and uh, everyone knows you, and you pull in. And as a being 58 engine, they know uh, about the fire factory anyway, and uh, it just stands out a little bit more. I, I, we kind of grown accustomed to it. As often happens in New York, the green machine finally succumbed to the rigors of traffic in the crowded Harlem streets. So, while awaiting the assignment of a new Seagrave engine, the company makes do with a spare unit from the shops. Back in the early 1890s, Engine 58 operated from this house, a single base station built just for this company. They're currently planning a celebration in the community, marking the 100th anniversary of Engine 58. Uh, well, it'll be nice anyway with the centennial because I'll get to see, um, I mean, a lot of people that... Uh, we have reunions, which we have like every other year, and not everybody makes it every year or whenever. And I think this, this time with the uh, reunion, we'll get to see a lot of people. Uh, I mean, I can remember some of my first lieutenants and, and captain and, and things like that, and firemen that I worked with, and that are gone uh, 15 years. I haven't, you know, since they worked here, some retired, uh, some have been promoted. Um, uh, there's a couple of guys that died. You know, you, you think about all these things, but. You know, it, it'll be a nice, I think it'll be a nice day, you know, I mean, just everybody gets together and, and the stories start to go. And... Ladder 26 operates a 100-foot aerial rear mount Seagrave. This vehicle has also seen many years of battle and will be replaced soon. Firefighting in Harlem can be demanding, but not all calls require a full response. This fire that uh, we're responding to is can fire rubbish fire that we have here. Uh, we've been responding to it uh, an awful lot. Like, actually, we've been res responding to it for years. What we have here is a auto repair shop in the middle of the street where they do everything from uh, uh, simple uh, replacement of windshield wiper blades to a uh, complete engine overhaul. And it, this all occurs all year long in the middle of the street here. And they use it this keep warm fire to keep warm. And we've been putting it out, but the people who make the fire are persistent and they keep lighting the fire up to keep warm. Uh, they are persistent, they truck in their lumber for this fire. I'm not kidding, they really do. They have trucks that come up and they unload lumber from where they get it, I don't know. I don't know where it comes from. I think uh, hopefully they'll get tired of it because certainly we're not gonna get tired of putting it out. But one of the fellows gave a name to this fire, it's called the Eternal Flame now. <laughs> the current station was constructed in the 1960s. To add a touch of hominess, the members have personalized it somewhat. An efficient brick and tile kitchen and dining area, complete with a hand-carved table and stained glass window, both of which proudly display the house's logo. And in the TV room, the walls hold memories of the past, through both members' photos and the countless unit citations that have been bestowed over the years. When I first got here, they were joking around with me. Uh, I was 25 years old when I first got. I walked in the door one day, and the guy that was here was here for about 22 years. I said, yeah, I've been on the job for about three years since, since you were about three years old. My uh, father was uh, spent 20-something years on the job. My uncle was an 82 engine with my father. Uh, my grandmother's father and her brother were all on the job, so we got a, a long history. It's just a terrific place. It's a very prestigious firehouse. It's known throughout the, the country. And uh, it's just uh, the top of the line. It doesn't get any better. Everybody here has got a little talent, and uh, if, if you can share your talent uh, with the rest of the guys here, that's great. And uh, hopefully, if I'm here in 15 or 20 years, or if I'm not here, that sign will always be here, and uh, a little part of me will be here. And uh, <clears throat> this is where my heart is, in, in 58 and 26. So if I'm not here, that sign will be here, and somehow I'll be here. Even after 100 years, the men of Engine 58 and Ladder 26 still look forward to their days of work at the fire factory. I would think that the guys that are working in this firehouse now typify the type of guys that's always worked here. Guys that want to go to fires, they want to help people, they want to be in the best company and be among the best firemen that there are on this job. 
and that's how I feel the guys are in this house right now. And after I'm gone and after all these guys are gone, we'll be replaced by guys just like us. And the tradition and the history of this house will continue forever.